Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This week's topic is hip stiffness as a risk factor for ACL injuries. Now when we talk about injury prevention, a lot of people kind of are uh, not convinced that we're actually doing uh, or that we can actually prevent injuries, especially traumatic injuries like ACL injuries. But remember, while an ACL injury can occur due to contact with an opponent, non-contact mechanisms are about 80% more likely to cause an ACL injury. And those mechanisms are multiple plane motions occurring simultaneously that cross the knee joint. And they happen during uh, landing and deceleration, for example. Hey guys, thanks for watching our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, a lot of studies have shown that ankle mobility is an important factor or risk factor for ACL injury because decreased ankle mobility um, has an impact on decreasing knee flexion, decreasing all of the landing mechanics. Now another factor that really has an impact on um, potential risk for ACL injury is hip stiffness and it's something we don't we don't think about quite as much so the hip especially hip internal rotation is super important for absorbing the rotation of the trunk and the pelvis on the hip right when we're landing or changing direction and if we have a hip that's stiff a hip that does not have a lot of internal rotation that means that an athlete is going to have to shift their center of gravity laterally relative to the knee joint that's going to position the hip in a position of adduction relative to the pelvis which is an injury risk factor for acl injuries so we certainly need to bring some attention to hip mobility, stiffness of the hip, as a risk factor for ACL injuries. Now, if you're in the habit of screening your athletes preseason, which in an ideal world we do, the idea of screening an athlete is to, is to ideally identify those risk, risk factors and intervene on those risk factors. So let's take a look at what this would look like for hip mobility. What is it, what is it like to screen and assess for hip mobility as a risk factor for ACL injuries. We'll bring our athlete in and I'm gonna show you what that screening and assessment would look like. So let's go through some screening first. So among the screenings that we do with our athletes, we have the multi-segmental rotation screen, which is probably about the most global screen that will start to give you a little bit of information about what's going on up the kinetic chain. So what we have the athlete do is he's gonna stand, I'm gonna get you to stand here, he's gonna stand shoulder width apart and he's gonna cross his arms over his chest, not too tight but not too loose, and he's gonna rotate and turn towards me. And then he can rotate and turn towards the other side. Now, as he rotates, for example, to the left, he's getting that torso rotating to the left, so that left hip is getting some internal rotation. So if we notice that he was limited, for example, to this left side versus this right side, it might be coming from the feet, it might be coming from, from the hips, but you, there are ways where you would double check that. So if we notice that he got a lot more rotation on the right side, for example, and less rotation on the left side, but the feet are doing their job, so we're seeing good pronation, supination in the feet, we might start to think something's going on in the pelvis or in the hips. And we can have him sit down. So we can have him sit down and he can cross his feet together. And then we can have him do that same rotation in this seated position. And so say when we got him to do this rotation in this seated position, we no longer saw a difference between the right and left side. So we know that that rotation issue isn't coming from the thoracic or above the hips, it's coming from below the hips, our feet were okay, so we're getting a pretty good indication that that left hip has some stiffness. Then we can get him on his back, for example, and we can look at that left hip and we can look at his internal rotation on that left side. So we can get him up here at 90 degrees and check and see if that internal rotation is limited. So obviously, because you're looking at one hip versus the other, you would look at the non-restricted side or the side that doesn't seem to have a restriction first and then compare with this side. So let's say we get him here and we see that 
he's got less passive range of motion in that left hip than the right side. We could also get him to turn on his stomach. And then we could look at his passive resistance to motion, okay? So if he's got a lot of stiffness, he's not gonna get a lot of, he's, he's gonna have a lot of stiffness in that, that weight of his leg is not taking his hip into internal rotation. Some people you'll find, people for example, who are hypermobile or have a lot of laxity, as soon as you get them here, that just the weight of their lower leg is gonna get them into a lot of passive hip internal rotation. In his case, he's got pretty much nothing. And if I take him there, you'll see that his entire pelvis starts to move. So he's actually got a pretty rigid hip. He's got some stiffness in there. Okay, now let's get him to stand up again. Another thing that you guys might be doing in a functional assessment, for example, is you might be looking at a kind of a single leg squat where he goes into a quarter squat on that leg. And if you see athletes that they're not getting excessive adduction, but they're shifting their body sideways, they're shifting their body sideways to keep that balance, that's because that hip is stiff and it's not allowing them to absorb and they're having to absorb by shifting their center of gravity laterally relative to the knee joint. And we know that that is an increased risk for ACL injury, okay? So in an overall screening process, that's the kind of thing you would be looking for. So you would have started to see things in your screening and then you would break that down to see, does that hip have too much stiffness? It's, it's a balance, right? Too, too little stiffness is not good either. If someone has a lot of internal rotation and can't, can't control it, then when they try to absorb, they're gonna get too much and there's, they're also gonna get valgus stress at the knee, right? But if the hip is too stiff and can't absorb, then I have to do something else with my body and that creates a relative adducted position and a valgus stress at the knee, all of which are risk factors for ACL injuries, okay? So there you have it. Hip stiffness is a risk factor that you can screen for for prevention or decrease of injury risk of ACL injury risk. Now, after that, once you've found something, then you need an intervention to target that, right? You need an intervention to optimize that so you can actually have an impact on that athlete's injury risk. That will be the topic of another video. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you stay tuned for the next video.